Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to BC214, our course on developing the human spirit. Thank you for connecting to the class. I know we have only one lecture per week. Um, let's pray and get started. Could somebody please lead us in prayer? Father God, we thank you and we bless you for this new day, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time you have given us to learn your word, Lord. Father, we submit each one of us unto your loving hands. Father, give us revelation and understanding as we learn your word to do it for your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are going to pick up from lesson or chapter number six today. Um, in the previous chapter, chapter five, we had um, discussed a little bit about the interactions of the human spirit with the spiritual realm. Uh, mainly, of course, our focus was on how believers, as believers, the Holy Spirit interacts with us. And then we, on, a, on the side, uh, side note, we said even the unbelievers, uh, they can also interact with the spiritual realm, but the powers of darkness and so on. Now, in lesson number six, uh, we are going to focus on the faculties of the human spirit. That means this is what the human, uh, these are the, um, uh, you know, just, li just like how we have the five senses to the human body, right? The human body has five senses. We see a parallel with the human spirit. That means even the human spirit has these five, we can say, senses or faculties, you know, things that the human spirit can do. So we want to uh, look at that from the scriptures. And then we talk about, we want to understand how the spirit, soul, and body will interact, how the spirit, soul, and body interacts, right? Because uh, uh, in the natural, uh, information comes, uh, we collect information or we become become aware of our uh, environment through the human five physical senses. That information goes to our mind, we process it, and then we do something with it. In the same way, we have to understand the flow from the spiritual realm through our five spiritual senses and how that comes into our mind and how we release that. So we need to understand that side of it. And we correctly have to live from our, through our spiritual senses, we have to live out uh, in our everyday life. So there's a balance between the two. Okay, so we want to understand that. And then we want to talk about a little bit on developing these five spirit senses. So. Let's look at just a couple of scriptures. I mean, we can, you know, there, there are a lot of scriptures that uh, indicate these things to us, but I've just mentioned a few. And some of this you will also be studying in, uh, the, in the course on the Holy Spirit, which you would have studied in first year um, uh, in, in that book, Gifts of the Holy Spirit, also in understanding the prophetic. We kind of, this, this content overlaps, you know, so because it, it kind of fits in. Uh, in all those areas. So you may have seen this or you will be seeing this in other courses as well. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 29 verses uh, 2 to 4. Um, Moses says in verse 2, two, two to 4, he says, And now Moses called all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. The great trials which your eyes have seen, the signs and those great wonders. Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear to this very day. So it's almost like saying, hey, what are you saying, Moses? Because he's saying, first he's saying in verse 2 and 3, you have seen. You have seen all the wonderful things God has done. Uh, you've seen the signs, you've seen the wonders, you've seen all the things the Lord did, you've seen. But in verse 4, he's saying, yet, you're not seeing. Right? Yet, you're not seeing. No. 
You're not able to see, you're not able to hear, you're not able to perceive or understand. That means, so he's drawing a contrast between seeing physically and seeing spiritually. Physically, yeah, they saw. They saw everything. All the miracles, signs, wonders, everything. They saw physically, they saw with their eyes. But with their heart, they couldn't see, they couldn't understand, they couldn't hear. So that's what he's saying. And meaning, your heart was, um, you could say, hardened, stubborn, uh, questioning, doubting, whatever. So that means they are seeing with the physical eyes, but the spiritual eyes is blinded, or hearing is dull, or their understanding is, is dull. They're not understanding the spiritual significance of things. Right? So that's the contrast. Isaiah 6, again, God is speaking through Isaiah. He says, go and, Isaiah 6, 9 through 10, uh, go and tell these people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but they don't see. Make the heart of these people dull, their ears heavy, and shut their eyes. Uh, they see with their eyes, they hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, uh, lest they you know, add return and be healed. So, uh, there is the natural. They keep on hearing, but they're not understanding. They're seeing, but they're not perceiving. The heart is dull, ears are heavy, eyes are shut. But if they actually see, if they actually hear, if they actually understand, they will be healed. Something will change in their lives. You know, Jesus quotes this. Right? That means, so what's, what's, what are we understanding? First of all, we are understanding that there is a parallel between the natural and the spiritual. Just like in the natural, you have eyes, ears, understanding. Spiritually, you have eyes, ears, spiritual understanding. Other thing we learn is, just because you see something in the natural doesn't mean you are understanding it in the spiritual. The third thing we are seeing here in Isaiah is, if you actually see, hear, and understand the Spirit, you will experience God. You know, because the latter part of verse 10 says, you know, basically, if you paraphrase it, it says, if they see with their eyes, if they hear with their ears, if they understand with their heart, they will return and be healed. They will come to God, they'll encounter God, and they will experience His healing, they will experience His work in their lives. So really, the spiritual is what is going to give us that encounter with God. You know, when you when you see with your eyes, hear with your ears, understand with your heart inside you, then your the person returns. He turns to God and he encounters God and experiences God's healing work and so on. You know? So that is most important. Now, when I was in Shillong. <laughs> This past last weekend, we were having. I was sitting with the pastor. We were sitting with the pastor. We were just discussing. We were just talking, because uh, on Sunday afternoon, after the second service, there were so many people who came forward. Like my estimate is about two hundred plus, but I don't know the exact number. But two, more than two hundred people came forward to give their life to Christ, and and these are many of them are people from the churches. You know, they are already from the churches. Some of them are from the village. They are animists and so on. So it's a mixed crowd. So we were discussing, and so we were asking, just discussing, saying, okay, when does a person get saved? Is it when they raise their hand <laughs> and say, oh, because I, I took them through the process, I said, okay, if you want to receive Christ uh, today, after, first stand up where you are, right? So they all, so people stood up from wherever. Then I said, okay, you say this prayer. So they prayed the prayer. Then I said, okay, if you have stood up and you said the prayer, I want you to come forward. So they all came forward. Then uh, after they came forward, then I led them through another prayer, just a declaration. I am a child of God and you know that. And then we prayed for them, uh, prayed over them, just breaking all you know demonic powers over their lives. And then after that, we led them into Holy Spirit baptism. So they were they were think, discussing this. When does when did the person actually get saved? When they stood up, or 
when they said the prayer or when they came forward to the altar, <laughs> when did that person get saved? Or when they prayed at the altar, because again, one more prayer at the altar. So we were just discussing. Then we said, see, we cannot, we cannot say exactly when. It is just that somehow that person inside the heart is open to know Jesus Christ. And somewhere, you know, by the time whether they're hearing the message or standing or praying, or oh, I also made them lift their hand up. <laughs> so then come for somewhere in this whole process, from the time they heard were hearing the gospel preached, somewhere in that process, their heart must have understood. I need to believe in Jesus. So we can't say, oh, that moment, you know, that moment when you lifted your hand, that was a time. No, that is only an expression, you know. But somewhere in this whole process, inside them, their eyes must have been opened, their ears must have been opened, their heart must have been opened, and they turned to the Lord and encountered Jesus. You know? So we can't say exactly when we don't know, you know. But as long, but as long as that has happened. That their heart has been opened, then that is that is what we are looking for. That they should in, in their heart be convinced. Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to follow Him. And as that that conviction in my heart, I'm making. I'm I'm not afraid to stand up and come raise my hand and come forward. I'm not afraid to do that because my heart is convinced that I want to follow Jesus. So just a little discussion. We were just over lunch. We were just talking and discussing. But that's that's what this last part, Isaiah six ten, is referring to. You know, the eye they have to see with their eyes, the eyes of their heart. They have to hear with their ears. They have to understand with the heart. That is when they will turn to God and experience His healing, His salvation. Uh, you know that uh, that transformation. Right? So. So we see you know, there's a lot we can learn from these two verses. And the Lord Jesus quoted this verse uh, in Matthew 13. So we can, you know, based on what we're seeing in these scriptures, and of course a lot more scriptures, a lot of other scriptures, we can say that if you look at the human person, spirit, soul, and body, we know body has five senses. But we can confidently say, based on what we have just read in other scriptures, that the spirit also can see, can hear, can feel, can taste, can smell. Example, taste. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So he's not talking about you know physical taste. He's talking about something in your spirit that is, is like... Tasting, you know, that God has become so delicious to me. <laughs> like God has become very, you know, tasty. Oh, uh, or sometimes even his uh, psalmist says, you know, thirsty, you know, like as the deer thirsts for the water, I am thirsting for you. So there's that comparison, there's, you know, physical and spiritual comparison. Even we can see smell in the spiritual realm, you know, in heaven, there is this incense being offered. Um, um, coming before God, which are the prayers of the saints. The Bible tells us that as believers, uh, we are the sweet fragrance of Christ to other people around us. You know, so that that uh, smell, spirit, spiritual, right? So that's the first thing. Then the other thing we can also say is the Holy Spirit. Primarily, primarily, I'm not saying only, but primarily interacts with us in our spirit. Hmm? We know the scripture, Romans 8 16. The spirit bears witness with our spirit. Hmm? The Holy Spirit is interacting with our spirit. Sure, he can touch our mind, he can touch our body. I mean, he's God, he can you know touch us in any realm. But the emphasis is that the Holy Spirit primarily interacts with us in our spirit. 
And God has built, designed us that way. God is spirit. He has made us human beings with spirit. Or we are spirit beings. So spirit to spirit, we can interact with God. Right. So that is also something we must understand. Now many believers, people even after they become believers, they depend so much on the soul. I'm not saying we should not use our soul, that is our mind. We should use our mind. But it almost seemed like everything is only based on what I can understand. That means they are actually excluding a very important part, a big part of how God wants to interact with us, which is in the spirit. Otherwise, they restrict everything to the mind. What I can understand, what I can think, I will only do that. I'm talking about believers, believers who live like that. They're actually missing out on a very big part of how God will interact with us. Because God interacts with us in our spirit. Of course, He has given us our mind. He will illuminate our mind and all of that will also happen. He's given us a body. Uh, there are times you can have some feeling in your body. You may feel the presence of God. All that is fine. But that is not all the time. Sometimes, you know, there may be some nice feeling. But the normal is in your spirit. So opening, learning how to receive from God in our spirit becomes very important. Okay, And that's what we want to do uh, in this lesson. So uh, we understand there are five par parallel faculties, and uh, our goal is to develop each of these, right? Each of these five faculties. So let's start talking about each one of them. Right? Now, lesson number seven about our spiritual faculty of seeing. Just to understand dynamic of how it works, right? It's not like in depth. There's a lot you can study. Actually, you can. You can do a study on each one of these, like, you know, go from Genesis to Revelation and see how the spiritual, how God has been working with the spiritual faculty of seeing. You know, you can do that. It's a very interesting study um, if you go. And you learn, we will learn a lot if you do that. But this, each lesson is only giving us a gist, a small summary of it. Um, so think about this. In the natural, you think about a little baby. It's born uh, with the ability to see. But it, the seeing faculty should be trained. Apple, <laughs> you know, cow, dog. <laughs> that means, hey, this is dog. This is a dog. You can see. I know you can see. But now you have to recognize. But to understand what you're seeing. Right? So, do we all have spiritually, I'm talking spiritually, so if you draw a parallel, spiritually, do we all have the ability to see? Yes. But that faculty has to be trained to know what you're seeing, just like in the natural. Otherwise, I'm saying, if you look at, think of the baby. It can see. But that information is of no value in the sense it's not understanding. Oh, that is a dog, that is a cat, that is a cow. No, it's not understanding. And of course, as we grow up, we see a lot of things and then we're able to combine, process that information. So think about when you're driving a car. With your eyes, we're seeing so many things. No? People on this side, people on that side, cars are coming, cow is going, dog is running. <laughs> Everything is happening. <laughs> so much is happening. And then you have to drive the car. So at that instant, you're actually processing so much information, what you're seeing. And then you're making uh, you know, your judgment on, okay, I'll stop, I'll go, or this, that, whatever, so many things. The point is, we have the faculty of seeing, 
This has to be trained, and it can be trained to uh, higher levels. So the very basic is, okay, recognize what you're seeing. This is a cow, this is a dog, that is, that is basic level. But when your example, next example we said, when you're driving, you're still seeing, but it is much higher level because you are processing a lot of what you're seeing, you're understanding, you're processing it, and you're also taking action. And also think about this. At that level, when you're driving, it is almost natural. It is flowing. It's, it's it almost become like natural. Like when you're driving, yeah, you're, you're seeing all these things and you're just flowing. You're not like, oh, I pause, press a brake. I saw a cat, I saw a dog, a car is there. They said, no, what should I do? Then go. It's not like that. It is just a flow. It is a flow, continuous flow. That means we have reached a stage where this faculty of seeing has, I'm talking about the natural, has become a normal, just a flow. So now draw the parallel with spiritual. So we all have the faculty of seeing, spiritually, as believers. Initially, Like the baby, we will learn to recognize, you know, oh, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. This is what is happening. Oh, that is a dog. Oh, that is a cat. That is a cow. Okay. You know, it is like you're like step by step, you're understanding what you're seeing in the spirit. But we should come to a place. Where it becomes a flow. It's part of you. Right? You're not pausing and stopping every time. Oh, what is that? What is this? Sometimes, yeah, even in real life, we pause and stop when you're not seeing something clearly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because you want to see things, try to see clearly and understand. But normally it just becomes a flow. Similarly, in the spiritual, we need to come to a place where what we are seeing in the spirit is just a normal flow that uh, becomes a part of your life. You're seeing in the spirit, you're un interpreting it, you're understanding it, you're getting the message, and then you're moving. It's not like, oh, I saw something today. No, you're not seeing other times. You're supposed to be seeing all the time. Right? It's, your, it's part of your faculty. As long as you're awake, you're, you should be able to see. And you're just flowing with it. Right? So, point I'm making is, we need to come to that place. And like this for all of our faculties. Right? That means seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling and tasting may not be that much, but it's also there. And we it shouldn't surprise us that when you see something. Yeah? So, and we really need that uh, in, uh, you know, in the church today. I would say in the world today, because um, there's so much, I'm talking about spiritual realm, in terms of spiritually speaking. There is so much happening, you know, in the church or in with so many things, uh, where it should be just normal for you to see and discern, you know, what is going on, you know, what is happening. Uh, what discerning what what you're seeing, what you're hearing, all of that, and it should just not flow normally. Uh, but if we don't have that, then we get into trouble spiritually. Okay, let me see. Maybe somebody asked a question. Let me just. Okay, yeah. So go ahead, Ravli. You have your hand raised. Yes, Pastor. Um... Pastor had this question where uh, I'm not sure we have discussed earlier, but uh, while we are talking about how we are perceiving in the spirit as believers, uh, so uh, we we talk about seeing, feeling, and uh, receiving. My question, first question is: uh, Do we do does the spirit, human spirit, uh, know? What what is happened? What happened in the past? 
or what is going to happen in the future. In the sense, because when we are considering believers, we say that the Holy Spirit is revealing us, revealing that to us in our spirit. Uh, what might happen in the past or what might what happened in the past or what might happen in the future. But when we are talking about non-believers, like everybody else, how do we say, how, how are they perceiving in the spirit? What is the general mechanism that happens? Because not everything might not be demonic. I mean, whatever they are feeling in terms of non-believers. Okay, uh, what was your question, Ravli, again? Like, um, what was the uh, question? For non-believers pastor, people who believe in Christ yet, uh, how are, in a generic form, how they perceive in their spirit? So that is my question. Because for believers, we'll say Holy Spirit is the one who will be talking to us. So for non-believers, how it works? Oh, okay, I understand. So, um, yeah, I, I know we were emphasizing, you know, the Holy Spirit communicating to us, but let, let's put it like this. Every person, every human being, believer or non-believer, has these five faculties in their spirit. Every believer, um, every person, I'm sorry, every person, Believer or non-believer, God has created us like this, spirit, soul, body. And uh, just as the body, human body, believer or non-believer has five natural senses. Similarly, spirit, believer or non-believer, has these five spiritual faculties. Every person has that. Now, of course, we were emphasizing, because we're talking about believers, we were emphasizing about the Holy Spirit speaking to us in our spirit yeah so that is but let's keep that aside and just talk in general terms so that means every person can develop the spiritual faculties to become sensitive to the spiritual realm you talk about believer or non-believer they can become so in the spiritual realm their spiritual faculties can be developed and they can become more perceptive to things spiritually and so on. Right? So they can access things in the spiritual realm through their spiritual faculties. But so then just say normally speaking, okay, let's say if they're not connecting spiritual world, I mean, not connecting to uh, demonic powers, not connecting to Holy Spirit. So just uh, without that, the spirit, human spirit, can recognize certain things. Like, you know, you've, uh, in the spirit, you feel, okay, the other person is like this, is this kind of a person. So that's a spiritual perceptivity. We call it spiritual perception, right? So that's there with every human person. And some people develop that more. And in general language, they call it intuition. Intuition. I mean, they they you know they use that word intuition. Oh, I just felt in something inside me like this. You know, intuition. They say, oh, I just felt like this or that. So that's why I did this. So they use that language, but actually, it is their spirit that is perceiving or become that has become perceptive to certain things. They may say, just by intuition, I knew that person was coming to cheat me. There's it. So what is that? That that in their spirit they became perceptive to the character or the nature of the other person's spirit that he was coming to cheat or he had wrong motive or things like that. So that is possible. I'm talking in general terms for any person, you know, any human person. Or on the other hand. The spirit faculties can be dulled. People just ignore it. They don't believe in it. So they just leave it aside. So that's where we can answer your question saying, even the non-Christian, that means a person not a believer, 
was not necessarily receiving information from the Holy Spirit or not even receiving information from demonic powers, just by their natural spirit, by just by their the spiritual faculties which they have, can become perceptive to things in the spiritual realm. Now, they could go a step further and connect to demonic powers at times and receive extra information. So if it is historical information, that means a non-believer is able to say to another person, hey, this, 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 this thing happened in your past, it could come from two sources. One, it could just be their own spirit being perceptive to the condition of the other person's spirit. Oh yeah, this person has gotten through a lot of grief and or a lot of trauma. And they perceive that because maybe in the spirit, the other person is hurt or other person is grieving or the other person is depressed. So they perceive that and then therefore they say that. Oh, you've gone through this, so you've gone through that. So that is the normal human spirit's perceptivity uh, that's the, you know able to recognize that. Or it could be sometimes that there are demonic powers that give information. Oh, this, this, this about your about the other person's past. Therefore, they have that extra information. Did I address your question? I hope I understood your question correctly. And. Yes, that's um, And one more question, I mean, uh, just a proper question, um, is that when a person is unconscious, uh, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm audible. So if a person is unconscious, uh, even though their body and their soul is not uh, in a functioning state, but uh, their spirit is alive and the spirit can perceive things. So, uh, do we say that when we are uh, communicating with that person, uh, so is the person's spirit uh, grasping what we are communicating with it? Um, yeah, I understand your question. So, the person is unconscious. When we are speaking to that person, can that person's spirit hear us? Hmm. It's a good question. I, I don't know if I have the answer for that. If a person is unconscious, we know the spirit and soul is there. And we are talking to that person. Can the spirit receive what we are saying or hear what we are saying? Hmm. Okay. Let me. I, I'm okay. I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm just trying to think of some examples where. Um. For example, I'm just thinking about Daniel and you know, or yeah, Daniel or even John. Um, when they had encounters, so Daniel and John, it says they fell down as though they were dead. Right? They didn't. They didn't die. They fell down with that encounter with that angel or with that elder. They fell down as though they were dead. So I'm. It doesn't tell us, you know, correctly, like okay, they felt they became unconscious or something, or or when you think about Peter in Acts ten, when he goes into a trance. Now, when he when he talk about a trance, the trance is a state where the physical body is suspended. That means almost it's like what we are saying, unconscious. That means the physical body is not conscious of its environment, right? So what we would call as unconscious state, or the Bible uses the word trance. So think about these three examples. Daniel, Gita, John. Um, they, uh, Daniel and John are saying, we fell down like dead. Peter is in a trance, meaning his 
awareness of the surroundings is suspended. In that state, they're still able to hear the angel, or in Peter's case, God speaking, or in John's case, the elder speaking to them. But in the natural, unconscious, but the voice speaking to them, they are able to hear. So in Daniel's case, the angel says, stand up. So he puts him on his feet. Peter's case, God is giving him this vision. He's seeing everything and he's having a, a conversation with God. John's case, the elder is saying, don't worship me. You know, I am one of your brethren and worship God and so on. So based on these examples, again, I, I, it, it is three specific examples. I don't know if we can... Uh, extrapolate or extend this to every situation. I know that is something we have to be very careful. Uh, but in these three situations, the answer to your question is yes. They could hear what was being spoken to them. But can we take this and apply it to every other situation is something I don't know. Uh, you know, for example, I'm thinking about a person who is in a hospital uh, lying on a bed and uh, they're unconscious. Now doctors tell us, and I know Amy Amy often often shares this, but they say that they encourage their family to go and speak to them uh, because uh, they, they feel that even though the body is unconscious, they're able to hear what the you know their relatives are saying, etc. And so if there's things they need to resolve, just go do it at that time. So I, I don't know. This is what they say. Um, so, my answer is, I uh, in these three cases, we know definitely that, yeah, they heard what was being spoken, even though uh, it seemed like their body was, un, you know, not conscious of their surroundings. But whether we can apply this to every situation, that's a question mark. Uh, I would be careful not to do that because, you know, other situations could be very different. Um, yeah, so that's uh, so. I don't have a clear answer to your question, but uh, this is how much I can say. Um, thanks, Pastor. Because uh, what happened recently? Uh, my my sister was not well, and uh, she was completely in an unconscious state, uh, being sedated and all of that. She was on ventilator, and uh, I, I I I went there, and I just. I know she is not in a physically she is not in a place to hear, but I felt that uh, uh, her spirit is alive and a uh, spirit can hear. So I was declaring God's word over her, and uh, I think after a uh, continuously I was I wish I I even shared gospel because I I don't know uh, anything can happen. I shared gospel. I was declaring God's word, and um, God healed her. Uh, she came out of ventilator and uh, uh, I mean, she's doing okay right now. She's out of danger. But I've seen it, uh, I've seen it like that. So I just wanted to confirm, uh, you know, if if that is, that is one of the case. Yeah, yeah. Praise God for what happened. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, in this particular case, thank God, you know, the, the, your sister-in-law was healed and recovered. Now, exactly how it happened, I don't know whether whether um, you speaking. Definitely, it's God's power healing the body. But whether her spirit was hearing what you were saying and whether her spirit responded to what you said, I don't know, but it'll be a nice thing to ask her and say, hey, did you hear what I was saying to you? Do you remember anything of it? Uh, just to see, just to kind of ask. Now, again, we don't know whether she would have heard you in the spirit and would even remember it or not. But it's good to just ask her. Just ask, hey, you know, when you were there in the ICU, uh, do you remember anybody's talking to you? Or do you remember things that were spoken to you? You don't have to tell her what you spoke, but just ask her to see if she can repeat it back. I've heard of instances where 
the person repeated back the prayers that were prayed while they were unconscious. So I've heard of those examples. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, which means that, yeah, they were unconscious, but the spirit was hearing. But does this happen in every case? I don't know. Uh, yeah, so. And also, you know, there are times on the other side, the flip side, what we have also seen is that when there is demonic activity, sometimes the demons put the person, or I, I, whether there's demons or because of all the 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 uh, the exertion that's involved in the, when the manifestation happens, the person goes into a deep sleep, like they fall, like almost like they're unconscious. You know, like you try to wake them up, they're not. It's like they're not there, but pulse is there, everything is there, but they're out. And uh, again, that's a state that I don't understand. And I don't know whether at that moment whether the spirit is hearing us or not. I, I don't know. I can't say. But that's, again, another observation. Yeah. I don't know. But it's interesting. Huh? You ask your sister-in-law. See. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Pastor, I just want to know this term unconsciousness. What it exactly is like when we are sleeping also, we can say that we are unconscious. Yeah, so yeah, so that would be a good example. So when we are deep past asleep, at that moment, we are not conscious of what's happening around us. But the difference is we have the ability to wake up. And then you become aware, immediately become aware of your surroundings. But in cases like what we've been discussing, where somebody is not well, right? And that time they don't have the ability to wake up and become conscious, right? They are uh, maybe they're like in, in a con physical condition where uh, the body is not able to do that. Or Spiritually, whether it's God affecting the physical body, as in the case of Peter falling into a trance, or in the case of a demonic possession or oppression, the individual at that moment is not in a state of, I can wake up now when I'll become conscious. How, like, how when we are sleeping, right? Something has happened where the physical faculties have been sus temporarily suspended. So we are saying that is the this thing that you're calling as unconscious state, right? So Ravi's question was, okay, that time can the spirit hear? So like, uh, let's say like we are not in a position, we'll forget waking up. So we are in a deep sleep. At that point also we can hear like how spirit can hear something. Because uh, if you take uh, Samuel's example, when he was sleeping only, uh, he, he heard. He heard. Mm. Like, can we say, like, if we are sleeping, like, let's say we are not talking about unconsciousness and we are sleeping, we are not in a state to wake up, we are not waking up. Let's take this example. So, if you are praying over me, uh, we'll keep this aside hearing by hearing. I woke up and hearing. I'm deep yeah, sleep. so when we, when a person is in a deep sleep, the spirit can hear. Meaning God can speak. So God speaks through visions, dreams, all of those things. So that's what we call as uh, dreams. That means we are fast asleep, deep sleep, but the spirit is having a dream. Right? The dream could come from God, it could come from the enemy, or sometimes it's the activity of our own minds. So the answer to your question is yes. While we're fast asleep, God can communicate to us through our spirit faculties. Sometimes you may have great feeling also. You may even feel joy. Right? While you're fast asleep, there's this joy. Wow. But it's not like physical feeling. It's not because you're hearing some good music or anything like that. But it is in the spirit. Yeah. So the five faculties, God can. When you're asleep. So that's what we call as like a dream. Or a vision, uh, uh, Daniel will say, I have a night vision. That means I'm having a vision, but it is while I'm asleep. Right? Those kind of experiences can happen. 
while we are sleeping. Okay. That is while sleeping, it's different from being unconscious. Also do this if someone is about to die, they are unconsciousness. Uh, like like if, if we get a chance to preach to them, like we can preach, like they can uh, uh, from the spirit and they can accept Jesus. Yeah, so that's kind of around what Rahul is asking. Um, if you ask me, I will do it, right? I will do it, yeah, and I will tell anyone, yeah, go ahead and do it. But do we know for sure that they're actually hearing and they're actually praying with us? I don't know. Like, I, 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 that's where I don't know, right? But should we do it? Yeah, go ahead and do it because it's quite possible that. The spirit does here, and there, and there are testimonies of people who, like when they come back to consciousness, they say, and they can repeat exactly what was spoken, which means they actually heard. Right? There are those testimonies, but can we apply it to every situation? I don't know. We get, but yeah, definitely we should do it. If you have the opportunity, somebody's unconscious, go ahead, speak into their spirit, you know, and pray and minister. That we should do that. But I don't have, like, I can't say, oh, yeah, yeah, every person will hear you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just can't say that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess it's time for us to stop. We'll continue this next week. I think I should, we should make this a two hour course. <laughs> so, yeah. so we need more time on this. Anyway, I thought one hour a week should be good. But anyway. Uh, we'll try to pick up speed. So we want to talk about each of these faculties, how to develop those faculties and uh, be more perceptive. Okay, let's close in prayer. And somebody could pray with us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the class, oh Lord. Thank you for teaching us, oh Lord. Lord, thank you for Pastor Ashish, oh Lord. Lord, uh, help us to uh, help us to learn everything, and Lord, and use for Your glory and live for Your glory, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll continue this next week. Thank you.